Hello, everyone. So happy to be here again in Chicago. I actually used to live here years ago, and then I got smart and moved to Arizona. So <laughs> you don't have to uh, shovel that sunshine off your driveway. So, um, so great to see everyone. Uh, been a long time mainframer, started in 1978. I actually was still in high school as a key punch operator for, yeah, for Denny's Incorporated. I used to punch all their time cards and they'd come in filled with, you know, food and, and drink and so forth all over them. But um, it was really fun to, um, to get into the industry. Um, of course, I stayed in the industry my entire career, and I just love working with mainframe teams and helping them embrace new technologies. So when I started working for Model 9, first of all, I was just blown away by their technology, and then when BMC acquired us, um, it opened up the door to all kinds of new integrations. We were just talking about that, that BMC has so many different tools that, you know, um, once now that we're reaching out to this cloud, we can utilize all of these different tools that BMC already has to make that even a better experience for our clients. Legal notice. So um, the, the whole idea of a data-led modernization, um, you know, they were talking earlier on the stage about data being, you know, the key element here. And certainly our mainframes are where that data lives. So the problem has always been, how do we get to that mainframe data? It's a challenge. It still is a challenge. Now, we're, we certainly have some, you know, uh, technologies out there that let us push some um, uh, transactions and so forth to the mainframe. But what I'm hearing from the clients that we're working with is, I want more of this data. I want a year's worth of SMF data that I can feed into my machine learning. I want, you know, the last five years of my DB2 information that I can feed into my analytics. And that's where uh, our solutions are coming into play here. So we fall under the data ops uh, solutions. And when I first started, uh, again, with Model 9, before coming to BMC, um, in 2021, Gartner put out this study. And of course, I was very interested in it because we're into cloud technologies. But they said by 2025, 35% of um, data center mainframe storage would be on the cloud. And now that it's been a couple of years and I've, uh, you know, obviously stayed with this technology, I would say that that was probably an underestimate. I mean, we are being embraced, the cloud is being embraced by mainframe technology, uh, by ma mainframe data going to the cloud. I just worked with a client recently that already had a cloud solution in their distributed environment. They were doing all of their backups to this platform. And they wanted to be able to bring in both their mainframe and their Unix data onto that same platform. So consolidating all of their backups onto a single cloud platform. And we can achieve that with them. And that's why we're here. So we're opening up the, um, the world of cloud storage for the mainframe, allowing uh, integration with other um, data platforms and so forth onto a single platform or into the public cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and so forth. Uh, one platform for all your data backups. So Amy Cloud, that is what BMC rebranded Model 9 as, Amy Cloud. And the Amy starts, uh, stands for Automated Mainframe Intelligence. Very aptly named. It's, it's a very intelligent sort of uh, technologies. And so we fit very well into this storage 
um, Amy's storage portfolio because we're extending those storage capabilities to the cloud. So everything that BMC was already doing in the world of storage, we can now also include cloud as another data platform, a security platform and so forth for that data. And the BMC tools just wrap themselves around this entire portfolio. Okay, so let's talk about Amy Cloud and where this comes into play. So we were just talking about modernization. That word probably means a lot of different things to different people. But when I say modernization, I mean modernizing on the mainframe, keeping the mainframe around and modernizing the technologies that we use on the mainframe. Now, I was a storage administrator for 20 years. I use the same technology my entire career, and it's still being used today. And it really wasn't improved all that much in the 25 years that I used it. So these technologies, and they're, by the way, they're very complicated, and they're very, you, you really need to have a subject matter expert to be able to manage those uh, data backup platforms and so forth on the mainframe. Um, there, it's not easy technology. Um, so being able to modernize those types of technologies that we're using to do those data backups make it simpler for new people coming to the mainframe, people coming out of college, or maybe they're coming over from the distributed side of this house. They have Linux skills. Um, they don't have very many mainframe skills, but, you know, we can teach them that because they have the background. And with tool sets like Amy Cloud, they're able to easily fit into these roles. They don't need to have 20 years on the mainframe in storage to be able to use these tools. <clears throat> Another big factor here with Amy Cloud is our ability to unlock that mainframe data and be able to take that mainframe data, push it to the cloud, and make it um, in a format that is consumable by those client-facing applications. So I mentioned before, I want to take a year's worth of DB2 data, feed it into the cloud, uh, my cloud analytics, and get some insights from that information. I want to take my SMF data from the last two years and feed it into my machine learning. All of this is now possible because we're using these new platforms and we're able to do this data transformation. And so that's the new use cases that are now available to us because we have these technologies where we can easily push data from the mainframe in a very high performing way. I know today you probably have had some experiences where you, know, you, you have data on the mainframe, you're using some current tool sets to try to push that to the cloud, but it takes forever and it uses a lot of CPU. And I really just can't afford to run these kind of processes on my mainframe. So we're going to address some of those issues today. Okay, so there are three different products in this new suite that was brought over again from Model 9 into BMC. BMC Amy Cloud Data, that's the main component. Um, Amy Cloud Vault addresses cybersecurity for your mainframe backups. Obviously, a big ticket item these days is the security aspect of protecting that data. And then Amy Cloud Analytics. So what I was just mentioning, that ability to take that mainframe data and easily orchestrate automation to push it to the cloud, transform it, and then utilize it in client-facing applications. I can, it's repeatable. I can do this every single time I update that vSAM data set or every time I do my batch cycle and update my DB2 databases. I can push that data, transform it, and then utilize it in a client-facing application.
So as I was talking about some of the challenges that we're facing today on the mainframe, number one is cost. We're all looking to reduce costs on the mainframe. And again, we're using these 40-year-old technologies that just keep getting more and more expensive. It's not that you're getting a lot of new functionality. They're just going up in price just because. So it's time for some new technology here, some cheaper technology, faster technology, easier to use so I don't need subject matter experts to run those kinds of systems. And that addresses complexity. There are new types of risks in the data center today that wasn't there even when I was in the data center. Certainly we did backups for DR, for regional floods or earthquakes or whatever type of natural disaster may plague your area, but now we're all subject to cyber threats. And if you don't think they're capable of coming after your mainframe data, I've got some people to introduce you to that speak at SHARE every year and scare the pants off of me about how easily they can get into the mainframe. And what are they targeting? They're targeting your backups. So securing those backups and, and being able to use these new technologies to provide extra layers of um, you know, I guess they call it an attack vector, right? You want to be able to try to layer on top different security measures so that when they get in, because it's not an if, it's a win, I'm going to put these different layers of protection around my data so that they can't get to it. And then we, we talked about the skill set. A lot of us are retiring. I should probably retire. <laughs> but I'm having too much fun, so I'm sticking around. Um, but there are a lot of folks my age that are retiring from this industry. New talent is coming in. We were just talking about right out of college. Some folks are being uh, groomed for mainframe jobs right out of college, which is fantastic. Uh, the SHARE organization is doing a lot of training. BMC does a lot of training for new mainframe talent. So, you know, this is all great. We need new folks on the mainframe. But we also need new technologies that help these folks acclimate easily into the mainframe environment and pick up on certain, um, you know, job skills that, uh, you know, because we've modernized our mainframe environment, it's easier for them to come into the fold here. All right, so I promise this is the most technical slide in the deck. I know it looks a little bit scary, but let's talk about how this thing works. So this is Amy Cloud. Uh, again, there's three different tool sets, but they all use the same type of um, architecture here. So on the mainframe, I've got data that my applications write to tape. Some of those are backups, and some of them aren't. Some of them are just application data that gets written to tape. I've got DASD, so that's where my live databases are, my live, you know, the, the application data sets that I'm using today, running my batch cycle, all live on that DASD. And that's what we're going to um, address from, from the perspective of backing up. And then we have tape or a VTL, right, virtual tape, which is really just an emulation of tape going to uh, some kind of storage on the back end. So these are my three sources of data. Now with Amy Cloud, what we're doing is we have an agent that we're running on the mainframe, okay? This agent is going to intercept allocations and also do things like run backup, DFDSS, under the covers so I can back up data that's on my DASD, okay? So today you might be using products like HSM or CA Disk. Anybody using these products? HSM, CA Disk, yeah, HSM. Yeah, HSM has about 80% of the market share. Yeah, or you're just running things like IEB Jenner, ID Cams, and so forth to back up files, okay? So 
the Amy Cloud agent is going to facilitate that. It's going to intercept those backups. And instead of writing it to tape, which was our traditional methodology, right? We're going to push that out over TCP IP in a very high performing way. This is where our patents come into play. Model 9 actually has six different patents on how we move data that we brought to BMC. So it's a very sophisticated way that we break down the data and push it in parallel over TCP IP. Now this is encrypted with HTTPS. So we're not adding anything or subtracting anything. We're using what's already available to us on the mainframe to do that data encryption. Now that's why that data is in flight. Then it lands on some kind of object storage. Now this storage, like I mentioned, can be AWS, Azure, Google. Those are called public clouds. Or it can be a box that I bring in and have in my data center. And lots and lots of vendors, I have a slide coming up on different kinds of vendors that supply that type of, cl of cloud. That's called a private cloud. If it's in my data center and I bought it and I take care of it, it's private. If it's something I contract with and that storage is located in a hub somewhere, that's public. Make sense? Okay. So Amy Cloud will back up data on DASD, push it out in a secure way, encrypted, and land it on that storage. And when it lands on that storage, it's also encrypted. So it's encrypted in flight, and it's encrypted when it lands on the storage. Make sense? Now, a lot of people ask me at this point, I'm using pervasive encryption. Everyone know what that means? If you're using invasive, I was gonna say invasive. <laughs> pervasive encryption, we support that. The pervasive, the encryption happens here on the storage. It will be de-encrypted when it comes off the storage in our backup job, encrypted again while it's in flight, and then encrypted again when it lands on the storage. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, now, because I'm able to now back up data in a tapeless way, I'm not writing any new tapes to that VTL. I can now start reducing the size of this VTL. And we also have an interface for those applications that are writing IDCAMs, IEB Jenner, uh, it, you know, different types of backup programs, even programs that are homegrown and that you're using in your application, we can write those directly to the cloud as well. So eventually, it can eliminate the need for a VTL altogether. Some clients are just reducing the size of it. Some are eliminating it altogether. And because we're doing the same functions as HSM, we're doing data set level backup, incremental backup, space management, archive, auto recall, we're doing all of those things as well. Folks are also getting rid of HSM. And so that's saving you license costs on HSM. If you're running CA disk, we can replace that as well. We do all those same types of functions. You don't need CA disk anymore. So not only can we eliminate this VTL or significantly reduce it depending on your, your desires and use cases, we're able to remove some of those expensive data management products off your system. And I got one more great thing to tell you about. <laughs> This little box here, I know it's like, what is that thing? It's representing the zip engine. So, because we are a modern technology written primarily in Java, 
we're able to take advantage of the zip, which means instead of, like with HSM, using general processor CPU to do all of that backup, archive, auto recall, um, you know, and all the different functions that HSM does, we can push that workload to the zip. Everybody in here know what a zip is? Y'all got them? Are you using them to their full capacity? Most clients aren't. We, from our analysis, we find that most clients are using about 20% of their zip. So this is a way for us to push that workload to the zip, utilize your already existing zip capacity, and take that workload off the mainframe. This all making sense, everyone? Anybody got any questions? No questions? I'm, do I'm doing a pretty good job then, huh? All right. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. So I promised you a slide on some of the vendors that we work with. There are more. They don't all fit on the slide. And of course, it had to be all nice and even and everything. But these are some of them, the, the major players. Um, as I mentioned, you can purchase the box and bring it in. That client I was telling you about at the beginning of my talk that wanted to consolidate on a single platform, they already purchased that for their open systems environment. And they're like, well, we already have this platform in-house. Wouldn't it be great if we could use it for the mainframe? Now you can. So if you already have an existing object storage vendor in-house and you want to consolidate all of those backups onto that platform, now you can with Amy Cloud. Okay, I keep losing this thing. <laughs> all right, so I mentioned that Amy Cloud data can replace those high CPU consuming backup, archive, auto recall, space management tools you're using today. We can significantly reduce or eliminate your VTL. Now, one of the questions I often get is, well, what about all the data that's already in my VTL? What do I do with that? Well, we have an import process that allows us to read all of that data, push it out to the cloud, and then you can just delete it out of your VTL. Some of that data, like HSM, <laughs> it's proprietary format. So if we pushed it out to the cloud, you would still have to have HSM around in order to be able to read that data when you brought it back to the mainframe. So if you want to eliminate HSM altogether, we have to what we call unwind it. So we got to bring it back to the mainframe and then push it out to the cloud. And we do this in groups. So we bring it back little bits at a time out to a storage pool that you've created and then we push it out to the cloud little bits at a time until it's all gone. And then in that, when you're done doing that kind of migration, then you don't need that HSM license anymore to read that data. Make sense? Okay. Now, when I first started with Model 9, what blew me away about this technology is how fast it is. I didn't think that it could be as fast as virtual tape. My God, virtual tape is FICON connected to my mainframe. How on earth could this, going over TCP IP, be faster? It's because of the way we move the data. Now that is a little deep dive. I didn't include those slides for this audience. See me after if you want more information on that. But that's what I call our secret sauce. And that's really where this technology shines, in how it moves the data, both out to the cloud and bringing it back to the mainframe. So we can do things like HSM archive. We could archive files, and then when your application runs on the mainframe and it wants to utilize that file, we bring it back just like HSM does, just as fast or faster than your VTL. 
Now, some of this depends on your infrastructure. We talked about those zip engines. It also depends on the OSA cards on your mainframe. How big is that pipe going out to your cloud, right? So if you got an itty bitty little pipe going out to the cloud and a whole lot of data, you're not gonna get the kind of performance I'm talking about. You need adequate infrastructure to run this technology to get the kind of performance that we promise you can get, okay? When we can do an analysis and help you figure out what does that look like. Now the good news is OSA cards and zip engines are not very expensive. And when you factor in the fact that we can remove your VTL altogether, we can take out HSM. And by the way, when you remove your VTL and you don't write any new tapes, you also don't need your tape management software. So RMM, CA1, all of that goes away as well. So do you start seeing the ROI here, how we can help reduce costs in the data center with one software solution and that object storage platform? We're removing hardware infrastructure and decades old high CPU consuming software running on your mainframe. That's exciting, right? <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> okay. So here is an example. This is an actual client example of what they saved going with our technology. This is what they paid for HSM, RMM, and their virtual tape subsystem for the amount of data that was uh, moved to the cloud. There's also costs associated with just having that equipment on the floor. So those are their costs that they gave to us as far as their floor space, power, and cooling. Also your FICOM ports. IBM charges for those FICOM licenses to hook that baby up to your mainframe. Those costs also go away. So here's my cost. And then with Amy Cloud for this particular client, this is what they spent on the software. They chose to use AWS public cloud storage. That was the cost. And you can see here that there was a tremendous amount of ROI achieved with this client. This client had about 2.5 petabytes of data. So pretty exciting opportunities here. And we can do this exact type of analysis with you in your data center with your numbers. So you can also see what you can save with Amy Cloud. All right. So this client here, NetBank, they're, they're the client that I'm talking about here. They're a pretty large bank in South Africa. And they were running HSM, by the way, and RMM. They were able to get rid of both of those licenses. They chose to eliminate their VTL altogether. So they saved their entire VTL cost and all the floor space, all the environmentals that go into that, FICON licenses and so forth. And so they told us that they were able to reduce their costs by 50%. That's significant. Now, is there change in the data center? Yes, there's going to be change. It, it works a little differently than these programs that you've been using for 40 years. Somebody's going to have to learn something new. Is it worth it? 50% savings? I would say it was worth it. And like I said, this is modern technology. We have a GUI interface, runs on a Linux platform. You don't have to maintain HSM Parm Live, do audits of your control data sets, resize those control data sets, restart HSM, all of the kinds of maintenance that goes into those big programs that are doing data management today on your mainframe goes away with these modern technologies. 
Okay. So that's Amy Cloud Data. Now let's talk a little bit about Vault. Let's say that you just bought a brand new VTL. So you got a couple of years that you're going to have to get some usage out of that. However, you do have a requirement to protect that data from cyber threats. And that is getting more and more important. Everybody hear about MGM Grand and Caesars? Yeah. Well, coming to a mainframe near you. So let's protect that data. With Amy Cloud Vault, we can do a full copy of everything that you have on DASD, push that out to the cloud. It can even be air gapped. Everybody know what air gap mean? Anyone not know what that means? Okay. So you can have a full copy of your data air gapped in the cloud, ready for recovery should this event occur. Okay. <clears throat> Lots of people talk to me about, well, how do I know for sure that that copy hasn't been affected by the cyber attack? Well, you can transform that data into something readable on the open system side of the house. You don't need a mainframe to do this. And check the data. Make sure that it's okay. So in this way, we can protect your mainframe data without changing anything going on in your environment today. You still keep HSM around, you still have your VTLs. All we've done here is add that extra layer of protection in the cloud where that data can be protected from any type of alteration. Everybody know what immutable means? Anybody not know? Okay. Immutable means that it cannot be altered. Once you write it to object storage, it can't be encrypted. Now, it can be deleted. So if, for some reason, somebody got in there with the right credentials and deleted all of your backups, all of these object vendors have a feature called object lock. So you, the client, say, I want, to keep a cop I want to keep that data around 7 days, 10 days, 30 days after deletion. So if somebody comes in and maliciously deletes, or maybe even accidentally deletes. I was a storage administrator for many years. Accidents happen. <laughs> so if by accident something happens... You can get that data back up to that period of time that you have built into that system. That's called object lock. Okay, let's talk about Black Knight. Black Knight's a financial institution out here on the East Coast. Oh, I guess we're in the Midwest, so over there on the East. Um, not only did they need a cyber protection solution, but they also had a requirement that if they weren't able to recover at their data center, because once you have a cyber attack, what happens? Well, somebody's got to figure out how did this happen? And somebody's got to figure out where is it at in my system? And all of this takes time. You're not going to be recovering in the next hour on your mainframe. So their requirement was, I need to be able to recover my data anywhere. Maybe my DR site has also been affected by this cyber attack. And I need to quickly contract with someone else and restore that data. So with Amy Cloud Vault, we have a feature called standalone recovery that allows you to send your IPLable system anywhere, IPL your system, recover that data from the cloud, and you're on your road to recovery. While all of that forensics and discovery and remediation is happening at your home site. So that was one of the requirements they had that we were able to resolve with Amy Cloud Vault. Make sense? All right. And the last piece of the solution set is the analytics piece. Now, this analytics piece, it can be used on its own. It can be in conjunction with data 
or vault so that you can utilize all those backups that you have to make anyway in another way. You can monetize those backups. I've got all this data in backup form out in the cloud. It sure would be nice to be able to utilize that data for my analytics, for my AI, for my machine learning, whatever your use case is. Now you can do that with Amy Cloud Analytics. Now what we're doing here is the data is in the cloud. We never alter that mainframe version of the data set. It always remains the same. That's your system of record backup. We make a copy of it. We transform it into a format that is useful for whatever application you want to use, like JSON or CSV or text, for example. And then that data is put into a, what we call a bucket. Object storage has weird terminologies like buckets and blobs. So you have to learn all of that kind of lingo. So we put it in a bucket and then these applications, your clients facing applications or your an analytics folks or whatever your use case is can come now and self-service that data directly from that bucket. And this can be orchestrated to automatically happen every single day. I create backups, I transform them, I put them in the bucket. Every day I'm getting all this fresh data. Or I can send, I just ran an application that updates this vSAM data. And as soon as that vSAM file gets updated, I want to push it to the cloud. We've got a batch step that you just put right in your job. The vSAM file gets updated, it gets sent to the cloud, we transform it, boom, it's in the bucket. And we're talking seconds here, near real time, even large files. Does that sound useful to anyone? Is that something you can use? Something you can't do today? Or it's not really easy? And remember, when I'm doing all of this work, I'm not doing it on the mainframe. This is in the cloud. And I, don't, I know a lot of folks do like ETL on the mainframe. That's expensive and time consuming. This all happens in the cloud, off the mainframe. So that's the analytics piece. Our client Unigroup, they're a trucking agency in the, in the I think they're in St. Louis, so that's the Midwest. And um, they, had, uh, they have DB2 and they feed a lot of their trucking information to a cloud application that is client facing, trucker facing and so forth. And before Amy Cloud Analytics, they were able to feed about 200 DB2 table spaces a day. That's all they had time for. That's all their CPU could handle. And it just took so long that they couldn't do more than 200. With our technology, they're now pushing over 2,000 DB2 databases a day, table spaces. So that's what I'm talking about. You might be able to do a little bit now. We can do a whole lot more for you because of the way we do it, how quickly we can do it, and that we're pushing it out to this object storage, commodity storage that's simple to use and endless amounts of storage. You don't have to worry about, will I have enough space for my 2,000 DB2 databases? Amazon would love to sell that to you. <laughs> okay. So I talked about this earlier, and I'm certainly happy to dive into the details with you afterwards. We didn't put it in this presentation because it's pretty technical and it kind of overwhelms people. But let me just tell you, I didn't believe it either when I first started. <laughs> you know, I've been working with virtual tape my entire career. Well, since the 90s, I've been working with tape my entire career. And some of the things that, you know, was brought to light for me Tape has improved, absolutely. I mean, when I first started, you know, I, I told you I used to be a key punch operator. Well, my next job after that, I was hanging tapes in operations. So I thought it was fun, you know, mounting the reels, feeding it through the loops and so forth. You youngins don't know what that means. <laughs> but it was fun. 
We certainly have come a long way with virtual tape. More drives, more capacity, it's faster. But the way that data is written to that tape is still the same. It's a sequential write, block by block. That's what we've changed here with this technology. That's what we've modernized. And we're using that zip engine to do it. So we can push that data much, much faster than sequential writes, even if I've got 64 tape drives out there. So talk to me about that. I'm happy to answer your questions. Call up your BMC rep, we'll do a presentation. I will share with you our patented technology on how we can beat virtual tape. Okay, here's an example. This is that Ned Bank client that we were talking about earlier. They didn't believe it either, so during the POC, we had to do side-by-side -side tests. This is DFDSS, and this is Amy Cloud. So they did several tests, different volumes that they dumped, data sets that they backed up and so forth, and we measured, you know, CPU utilization, elapsed time, the whole bit. And you can see here, just from a time perspective, how much more efficient we were on that backup than using traditional tape. Now, we're using DFDSS under the covers too. So that's an apples to apples comparison. The only thing different here is they're writing to Azure and, and the DFDSS is writing to virtual tape, FICON connected right in their data center. So there you go. All right. So dramatic cost savings, reduction of complexity. You can give this kind of project to a brand new mainframer and they're going to pick up on it and, and fly with it. Um, faster recovery, improved cyber resiliency. You're writing to object storage, which is immutable and also has that great object lock feature. So if Colleen gets a hold of your data and accidentally deletes it, you know that oh, shit moment, right? You can get it back. Some folks just don't want to be in the hardware business anymore. Maybe they're pushing their equipment to a colo and they got to play for that floor space. We can eliminate that VTL. That saves you lots of costs. Um, so it's, it's just a great technology. I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. I'm thrilled that BMC has brought us into the fold here. Like I said, we could integrate with a lot of their great solutions, bring even more advantages to the data center with this type of technology. So, any questions? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. The question was, you've been talking about system Z, does it do system I? I'm sorry, we don't. This is a main, I'm a mainframe girl, and this is a mainframe product. Maybe down the road, talk to him. <laughs> Any other questions? No other questions? Are you thrilled? All right, very good. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.